Okay, you can turn in your Bible to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to show you kind of an interesting thing here, and this is by no means definitive or anything. This is just something the Lord's been kind of putting in my mind here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together to, unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. goes down through. Now what a lot of people do is they'll say the falling away, the apostasy, whatever you want to call it, the departing from the faith that talks about over in 1 Timothy, um, this, they'll say that's one thing, and then the man of sin being revealed uh, is another thing. It's, in other words, two different events. Well, kind of a unique way to, to put this thing, what I have been thinking more and more as time goes by, is not so much that it's two different events. All right, falling away here. The falling away actually causes the revelation of the Antichrist. Okay? And we're going to look at uh, six points. Six different things that enter into this falling away. That we see falling away from positions that Christians have taken for a long, long time. And that this falling away is actually what is bringing in the system of Antichrist. All right? It's not that things get real bad and then the Antichrist just kind of shows up and brings in a lot of new doctrines. No, the new doctrines, the falling away, is actually bringing in the Antichrist system. Making any sense on that one, hopefully. Point number one. The post trib rapture issue. Okay? That's part of the falling away in the end times. More and more people saying Jesus isn't coming. We're going into the Great Tribulation. They're giving up hope for Jesus Christ to catch away his bride before things get really bad. And they're even having to say that the first, you know, the seals and everything, the seal judgments there, the seven seals, it's actually what man is doing to man and, you know, to, to the body of Christ and whatever else, apparently. And there, there's even, you know, decent Bible-believing preachers that say, well, I still am kind of pre-trib, but I lean more towards we're going to be there for the first three and a half years. Uh, well, that's a real problem because the body of Christ is in heaven before the first seal is opened. The 24 elders, and then you have the great multitude of angels after that. I believe representing, you know, in the, in the resurrection we are as the angels of God, the Bible talks about. So, you have a real problem if you say that Christians go through any part of the time of Jacob's trouble. After all, it is the time of Jacob's trouble, as I've said so many times. But this whole post-trib rapture thing, think about what they need to happen for them to say, we were right, we were right. What do they need to have happen? They can go over scriptures. I can go over scriptures. We can go back and forth. We could, you know, I debated these people for years and years and years. Comments, people writing me things, people sending me stuff, whatever else. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But what's going to be the real proof? If he shows up. If the Antichrist shows up, their system's right. Okay. So they're not looking for Jesus Christ. I've said this for years and years and years. Post-tribbers, be they post-trib, pre-wrath, mid-trib, the whole way through the whole thing, whatever, if, they're, if they don't believe that the body of Christ gets caught up before the seven years starts, before the time of Jacob's trouble starts, before the first seal is open, just so I can not let anybody get out of this thing, you know, they always look for little loopholes. Well, is it, does it, is it really seven years? Is it, is it you know, the, before the first seal is open? Okay, if you believe that you're going to be here on the earth when the first seal is open, which is the Antichrist being revealed, then you fall into this category here. Okay, for the sake of this argument here. You're a post-trib rapture believer. They need to see the Antichrist. And as I've said, when I bid, did years and years ago, 2009, 
my post-trib rapture thieves video, I could barely find any videos on YouTube about the post-trib rapture type of a thing. And uh, now it's covered. It's saturated with people denying the pre-trib rapture, you know, pro more properly called the catching away or catching up of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. So there's one of the things that's led to the falling away. And what does it do, too? As I've said before in other studies, um, if I tell you that one year from this very day, from this minute that you're watching this video, exactly one year from now, the catching up is going to happen to the body of Christ. How are you going to spend your last year? If I tell you one year from this day, from this very minute that you're watching this video, the Antichrist is going to show up. How are you going to spend your year? Anybody that's honest is going to say it's two totally different systems of belief. If you believe that Jesus Christ is coming back and you only got a year left on this earth to serve Him before the judgment seat of Christ or your works that you've done after your salvation, your works are judged, you're going to spend your last year being the most fervent Bible-believing Christian out there. You're going to be out giving out tracts and witnessing to everybody you know and warning people and everything else. Of course you would. Anybody with any sense would that's saved. But if you believe that the Antichrist is going to show up exactly one year from today, you're going to be stockpiling food. You're going to be getting things ready. Why would you be out there trying to win souls and all this other stuff? It doesn't make any sense. You know that the things are going to fall apart and all the stuff that's going to start happening and whatever else. If you have any sense, you'd be preparing. You see? And that's exactly what these preppers do. This, this post-trib rapture thing leads to prepping. Right? That's the whole deal. And you'll see these people. I used to be pre-trib. I used to believe we were leaving before any bad times come and whatever else. Now I'm a prepper. Yep, it's falling away. Right there. Number two is the integration movement. As opposed to what the Bible teaches, which is segregation. Not racism, but segregation. You see, integration destroys culture. It destroys unique ethnic diversity. Segregation preserves it. All right? You don't go to a farmer and say, do you just grow your corn and your wheat and your, and your soy and your, everything just all in one field? Just mix, just go out there just with your, your tractor and you got your cedar on the back there and you just go out and you just spray all the different types of seed out into the field and hope for the best. No, of course not. You want to segregate your fields, put roads between them. Hey, a uh, farmer, you're going to go out there and just have all your livestock all together? Crazy. But we're supposed to integrate all cultures and societies. And to do so, to, and, to, and to say that this is wrong, integration's wrong, and you shouldn't be shipping foreign people into other countries and whatever else, and interracial marriages are messing people up and things. You know, anti miscegenation laws existed just back in the 1960s, they were overthrown here in America. It was illegal to marry people of a different race. But, you know, we're, we're more progressive now. You see, we've come further now. You see. But you go back into the book of Genesis. Just give you a good one on the thing. And you say, well, this is just, oh, I just can't believe it. Well, there's a lot of things you couldn't believe if you don't believe the Bible. Genesis chapter 9. Get back there. Or is it, no, I'm sorry, verse, or chapter 11. I always think 9 because that's when they, the flood was over and things. Genesis chapter 11, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Well, that sounds like a good thing. One language and one speech. We're all coming together. It's, isn't that nice? And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and let burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a ta city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Segregating, in other words, according to their language. To this very day, you're, you're basically, your ethnic makeup is determined by your language. German. 
I mean, some of them you can say American, you know, well, that's kind of issues over here, but, you know, English, French, Italian, you see, Japanese, Chinese, Indian, whatever. Verse 8, So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, or Babel, however you want to say it, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. You say, well, that's Old Testament, before the giving of the law, number one. So a lot of that still applies to today. But secondly, you can go to Acts chapter 17, verse 26, and it talks about God setting the bounds of their habitation. The boundaries are still there, 12 of them. Again, purpose for another study. But how can you have a one world government, a new world order, without integration? If all the nations are separate. So you fight wars of aggression. You say we're, we're liberating these people as we're bombing the living daylights out of them. We're liberating them and bringing them democracy. You know, mm -hmm. you're creating a new world order with integration is one of the goals. And I get people attacking me like crazy, calling me a racist and everything else because I stand against integration. I look at an African and I say, those are beautiful people over there. Stay in their country. Stay with your culture. Keep the way that you dress. Keep your language. And I'm the racist. The integrationist looks at an African over there in their country, in their native country, the Maasai people or whatever else, and they say, that's terrible. Let's bring them into America. Let's blend them in with the culture. Here, take off your native dress and everything else and put on these hip American clothes. Get you into American culture. Eat American food. And that's good. No, that's called destroying their race. A segregationist is for unique races. I don't hate people. Integrationists do. Number three. I've got to keep the love going here. <laughs> How about the uh, Trinitarians? You see... In the time of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be three. Get your nice little three-pointed trichetra there. You know, there's going to be three ruling on the earth. The dragon, the false prophet, and the antichrist, the beast. Hmm. And so you have this whole system of this Trinitarian thing all these people militantly defending something that doesn't even appear in the scriptures. It's a philosophical term created in the second century. And they come up with all this language and everything else. You've got to add all this stuff to scripture. You can't just take the Bible as it's written. You have to add all these things. Divine essence and substance and God the Son, God the Holy Spirit and the persons and all these other things that you have to add to scripture to make this Trinity system work. Why? Why is it so important? Why is it such a divisive issue? Why? Because it's part of the falling away that's going to bring in the Antichrist system. The Antichrist with the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. Three separate persons. It's part of the falling away, brethren, that brings in the Antichrist. Number four. These aren't in any kind of chronological order either, I might add. New versions of the Bible. You say, oh, now, come on. How are you going to bring in a Roman Catholic world religion if you have people believe in the King James Bible and saying, this is the only Bible right here. This is it. No, you have to sow confusion. You have to sow doubt into people's minds where people can hold up five different versions and say, I prefer this one for that, and I prefer that one for this, and whatever else, and everybody just kind of decides what is right. And if you don't like what your particular version says, well, then you just go and you grab a Greek text and you say, well, actually, the Greek word would be better translated as, you see? You have to break down the authority of, thus saith the Lord. You got to get rid of that. So this is one of the biggest parts of the whole falling away thing, removal of final authority. That's part of the falling away that brings in the Antichrist. Has to be done, has to happen. I can say a whole lot more on that one. 
but again, this isn't a real detailed study. Number five, another good one, church buildings. You say, oh, come on, come on here. Let's go back to the first century. Um, they're meeting in homes. They were meeting in fields. They're meeting in different places and whatever else. Um, and the whole Bible is finished. Last period there in the end of the book of Revelation gets done. And the Lord says, oh, oh I forgot. I should have written something in there about building buildings and calling them churches and inviting the lost to them because you have a special Christmas cantata and, and uh, you have soul winning events to go out and invite people to your local church. Um, again, we see this peculiar thing of something that is added to Scripture, and yet people insist that you're part of the system. Kind of like uh, the Trinitarians. Adding things to the Scriptures and then condemning you if you don't go along with their additions. Why is it so important to have church buildings? Well, because without church buildings, you can't worship the Antichrist corporately. You can't do it. If everybody's just doing their own thing in the time of Jacob's trouble and you're not having to go to church and worship the beast, that's part of you know taking the mark, taking the mark, worshiping the beast and his image. Three. One, two, three. You understand? Without church buildings, people just doing their thing at home, you could lie. You could just, oh, yeah, oh, sure, yeah, you know, whatever. You're not going to lie when you have to be forced to go to church someplace because the heretics that were there and everything else, these weird Bible-believing Christians that left. They aren't going to say it was a catching up or anything. They'll just say that we disappeared or whatever other thing that they'll come up with or aliens took us or Lord only knows what. But we have to, we have to make sure that you are with us and not with the terrorists anymore. And the war that will be there against Islam in the end times with the Roman Catholic Pope as the Antichrist. And he's going to, I mean, he goes out warring and, you know, conquering and, and warring and things. Who's he fighting against? Uh, Islam. <laughs> but, uh, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll blame all kinds of things on, on Bible-believing Christians and whatever else. And, and, you know, they're going to use all these different things to get people into church buildings. I mean, again, if you ask the average person, person where do you worship at? They're going to think about a church building. Why such a huge buildup of church buildings over the last two, three hundred years? Again, where were Bible-believing church buildings three, four, five hundred years ago? They didn't exist. Bible believers for centuries, well over a thousand years, didn't have church buildings. Now all of a sudden, you just have to go to one, you have to be part of one, and if you're not, then you're kind of questionable as in your relationship with the Lord. Why is it such an important push? Because it's part of the falling away, brethren. The falling away that's necessary to bring in the Antichrist system. And you study, again, who brought in this whole church building thing and whatever else. Late 1800s, a lot of the big-time preachers, and then going into the 1900s, a lot of them were Freemasons. What do Freemasons do originally? Stone masonry. That's how the whole thing got started. Interesting that uh, a lot of these big church buildings were built by Freemasons. Hmm. And number six. No changed life. Gospel. That's another big one. There's a major attack on repentance, uh, true biblical repentance that produces a changed life after salvation, where God, you know, the Holy Spirit of God comes into you as a, as a newly born again Christian, and your life changes. And all of a sudden you are turning against sins that you didn't have a problem with before, and uh, just your whole, your whole worldview, everything changes. But you see, that has to be removed by the modern Christians, these modern people that they'll say, well, repentance is just turning from unbelief to belief. And they, 
Why are they trying to get rid of the changed life? Because you see, in the time of Jacob's trouble, up here, when he shows up, salvation is going to mean a drastic changed life. At that point in time, you're going to die for your faith. Unless you can kind of come down here and say, well, there's no, there's no changed life. It's just belief. Just belief. It's just belief. You can believe that Jesus died for your sins and, and you know, just cut up the scriptures and whatever else and you'll have people taking the mark of the beast. And a lot of these big Christian leaders, Ken Hovind came out. We did a video on the whole thing. Um, can you take the mark of the beast and still be saved? I don't, I don't know. I'm not really sure. You know, maybe you can. You know, John MacArthur? Well, yeah, sure, you can. And a lot of these other guys, uh, Gene Kim and Robert Breaker both, have come out with videos saying that uh, you can take the mark and later on, if you, you know, that's, oh, that was a wrong decision, you can cut your right hand off. Or pluck out your eye and that takes the chip out of your... You see? All these people that get away from repentance and the changed life that follows true conversion, all these false prophets that come out against it, they're coming out and saying, well, I, I don't know if it's such a big deal. You could probably take the mark. You see, it has to be there, the no change life thing. It's part of the falling away, but it's necessary to bring in the Antichrist. Because, hey, I, I mean, certainly God wouldn't want you to not be able to buy or sell. I mean, certainly he could understand that. And I mean, there's no change life anyhow. As long as you believe that Jesus died for you, you see, so that's just a small list. I could come up with probably a whole bunch more on here, but it's just kind of an interesting way to look at it. Again, you know, we were talking about this thing, and, and I've talked about it with some of the brethren as well, and that is, you know, I don't think it's two different things, the falling away and the Antichrist, as far as two separate unrelated events, so to speak. I believe the falling away is what brings in the Antichrist. And all these things here are happening as part of the falling away, but they're all pointing to the Antichrist. The post-trib rapture, they're looking for the Antichrist to prove themselves right. Integration, you can't have nationalism. You have to have internationalism, globalism. Trinitarians, they're looking for three persons, but all one God. So that's in the temple of God showing himself that he is God, How's he going to do that if he can't manifest three different persons? Think about that. The new versions remove the authority. So everybody does what's right in their own eyes. You see? And then you rely on a man to tell you what the scriptures say. The great scholar and whatever else, the ex-cathedra statements of the Pope. How about a Pope that shows up that's supernatural? And it looks like the paintings of Jesus Christ and brings great reforms to the Catholic Church and wages war against Islam. How about a guy like that? Could they look to him for authority? You see? Church buildings, part of the falling away. The last 300 years, it's been a steady decline in the strength of Bible-believing Christians the strength and understanding of doctrine is going down as we're getting more and more church buildings. Bigger and bigger and bigger church buildings. You think the two are related? But you need the church buildings to worship the Antichrist. No change life gospel. Again, for years and years and years, it meant something to be a Christian. You go back to the first century and say, hey, you know, walking around among the Jews and you say, hey, for you Jews out there, if you get saved, not a thing's going to happen in your life. Nothing's going to change. They'd look at you like you're crazy. Same thing would work today. I mean, with a Jew today, you go over to Israel and say, hey, you know, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Nothing will change. <laughs> They're going to say, are you nuts? My whole family, they'd, they'd try to kill me if I got saved. But in America, you can have salvation. It doesn't have to mean anything changes. You just study the Bible and you learn the right things to say and you watch videos and you listen to some tapes and whatever and you play Christian. Mm -hmm. All six of these things are the falling away and all six of them are necessary to lead into the Antichrist system. Please make sure that you're not deceived in any of these points here. Again, if you have questions on this stuff, I've got 
uh, close to 1,500 sermons, or videos, I should say. They're not all sermons. Some are announcements or whatever other kind of things. Um, but well over 1,000 doctrinal studies out there. Right? There's other good channels out there that talk about the same things. Pray. Ask the Lord to show you the truth. Um, because when the body of Christ leaves, you're there. And salvation at that point in time is going to mean you losing your head. You get killed, martyred. Get saved now.